Hey, praise the Lord this morning. I'm running a few minutes late because I'm talking to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, I mean, I could be here for four hours doing this one-on-one, which is that's what I like to do. I like the one-on-one. Yeah, but anyway, glad you're here. Let's just jump on our feet. And if you're waiting online to get church going, man, I'm sorry. Blame me, man. And we got, we got a lot of people out there just waiting to have church with us that aren't here. Pretty good-looking crowd here this morning. Uh, Bend your neck around. There's more coming, but it's a pretty good crowd, man. Pretty good crowd. Thank you for being here today. How many know we're having a chicken dinner after this? And how many are coming to that chicken dinner, even though you're here in the first service? Good, good. You can come back. You can come back. What's that mean? It means come back. How hard is this? That's what it means. And they'll serve you. What's your shirt say, buddy? What's that say? Find joy. There you go, buddy. That's what you've been finding, ain't it, son? Amen. God bless you, buddy. You're welcome here. You know I keep telling you that. Yeah, oh, you're funny. Oh, T, oh, it was? Oh, you're, 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 oh, but you're not trying to be funny. A T-shirt for turkeys. I know. I know. I'm just kidding with you. Anyway, praise the Lord, guys. Let's thank God we live in America. Let's start off. Come on. Don't give up on your country. Come on. You live in a country where a crazy guy like me could tell some folks we're starting a church 21 years ago. And people came along and said, well, we'll help you. And we met in my house for about a month, not preaching but organizing and sharing Christ as well. And then we went to Lemon Bay High School. And for 12 and a half years, we were there preaching God's Word every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. And then in 2015... We're able to move into this campus debt-free for the glory of God, not owing one person a dime. Let's thank the Lord for that. Praise the Lord. Man, crazy. Amen. And we just continue on. We just continue on, man. That's what we do. The Lord's touched my heart. You're singing behind me. They're getting ready. Uh, But the Lord's touched my heart early on to love him and to love them to love him with all our heart, and to love people. And that's who we are at Fellowship. We're just glad you're here. If it's your first time today, we're celebrating 21 years today. With a big old chicken dinner afterwards, you might say, can I come? Of course you can come. It's all free, and we're going to eat the snot out of it, okay? That's the plan. That's the plan. We're going to have a good time, and uh, we'll get out there about noon today. So if you come back, it'll be about noon, and uh, I'm going to try to be timely today. We'll see how we do. Amen? Are you all ready? Come on. Let's thank the Lord. Wait a minute. For Mr. Joel that plays this guitar, he and his wife, Naomi, she had that beautiful baby boy yesterday. So he's not here. Mr. Chris Brooks. Mr. Chris Brooks is also not here. He's a coach of a soccer team, and they're in a big tournament down there in Fort Myers today. But I'm going to tell you something. Anywhere Chris Brooks is, Jesus is going to be there. And he's going to share somehow, some way with his kids something. And I got a feeling he'll be praying with them youngins today, even though he ain't here. So the band, a little bit different today, but we're going old school, right, son? We're going to do some of the first songs that we ever did at Fellowship Church when we started. So we'll start out with this one. What's it called? Shout to the Lord. Lord. Amen. One more time. Let's thank the Lord. Let's have some singing this morning. Come on. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort. Shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the King, my 
about that that's a throwback song right there <laughs> you know you might say well what I don't, that's not an old song no that was a song that just come out back in the day when we started this church 21 years ago and I'd cut my teeth all those years on hymns and I was a worship leader for years and most hymns I still know them they're hard to stump me on hymns I don't know why that is it's just the way it is but these were songs that were sort of new, new to us and matter of fact I was riding in Dallas, Texas I'd met with some folks before we started this church I'd been a minister here in Inglewood for about 17 years but I wanted to do something different I wanted you to be loved I wanted you to feel love and I didn't want to give a hoot about what your hair looked like or if you had a tattoo I wanted somehow to let you know that God loves you and He cares for you and so I went for some help. I went out to Dallas and met some different people and friends that I had. And I said, can we do something, just something different? And the guy I talked to, he said, Gary, you're the best when you're just you. You're the best when you're just you, man. And he convinced me to try to just be comfortable with who you are and love on people, man. And so the Lord took it the rest of the way. But when I was there, I heard this song. I heard this song and I swore when we started the church that's going to be the first song we sing right there I hadn't seen it in a while let's sing it it's a simple thing praise the Lord we fall down we lay our crown at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of your mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, we cry, holy, 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 we cry, holy.
let's do that again. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of His mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. We cry, holy, holy, holy. Is the Lamb. No more fears. No more fears. You dried our tears at the feet of Jesus. Your grace abounds to all who found all the feet of Jesus. And we cry. cry holy holy acapella and we cry holy 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 we cry simple song but a good song oh you got one more good we're gonna do one more while you're up amen wow taking us down memory lane huh what a great song i think maybe that's why the lord has blessed fellowship church because he gets all the credit we're all screw-ups you know that right but with him all things are possible and and he doesn't throw us out with the trash and he'll work with us amen but the key is to just you keep falling down at those feet amen you keep falling down at those feet get off your feet and lay down for his feet a little bit your attitude and your actions and god will take you places amen this is one of my favorite songs and i fell in love with this song years ago as well and uh wow touched my heart praise the lord listen to this thing it's crazy I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted but you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again I'm forgiven thank you Jesus I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, but you were condemned. And I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. You were condemned. Oh, I'm alive. 
on, church. Let's sing it. Come on. Here we go. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. How about one more time? You. for some throwback songs. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They tell me I need to get on the stage because people can't see me, but I'm wore out, so I'm standing right here for a second. Amen. Come on. Let's pray together. Thank you for being here today, by the way. Thank you for being here. Let's pray. Lord, we love you because you love us, and all the songs seem to say something all about that. Lord, we don't want to be a church. Please, God, Please help us. We don't want to be a church where you, Jesus, are not the preeminent one. We want you to be at the very top. We want to fall at your feet. We want to know you're God and we're not. Help us, Lord, we pray. Burn those songs in our heart today and into our minds. Lord, I pray for folks today if they're with us for the first time or maybe they've been coming several times or watching online, but if they died, they don't know they'd go to heaven. Lord, somehow, some way, we've messed it up. We put our faith in ourselves, or we put our faith in a church. Lord, I pray every one of us today would put our faith in you, Jesus, and no one else. You're the son of the living God. You so loved us, you came. And you died on a cross for our sins, not your sins, but our sins, my sin. Lord, I pray every one of us will say yes to you today. Yes to you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for others today that they've got things in their life. There's things that just ain't right, like all of us have at times. And I pray today, Lord, they'll realize that, they'll agree with you on that, and they'll get that taken care of today. 
And I pray for their forgiveness today because I know you want to do that for them, Lord. You want to help them fight this good fight. Encourage us, we pray. Help us, Lord, we pray. We don't want to have church without you. Be in our midst, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Be seated. You were up for a while. You did fine, didn't you? Come on. How you doing, big man? Good to see you. You are. Tell me the truth. Did we start this church 21 years ago at my house? How do you, how do you know? Well, we got a postcard in the mail that said, where's Gary? Yeah. And uh, my wife and family, and we all tried another church uh, earlier than that for uh, reasons I don't need to get into right now. But we went, and we were like, oh, I, couldn't, I just couldn't do it. We were, we were used to Pastor Gary, early service, over uh, just a couple of blocks away, and just nothing lined up, nothing compared. And uh, I was ready to, like, just to take a break. And uh, then we got a postcard in the mail not long after. And I'm like, well, we don't have to take a break. So we showed up at your house, and uh, we're blessed to have people come around us and kind of mentor us because we had no experience in leadership or doing anything like that, working with kids and stuff. And I think you saw that. So they're like, we're going to make them do the kids. <laughs> Get the naive ones, the ones that want to serve, that don't know better. Make them work with children. They'll humble you quick. But I tell you what, it's been, uh, and I've said it before from stage, it's something about working with kids that changes everything because I can walk down an aisle at Publix now and have a young person call my name from down the, down the aisle. And I don't even know who they are anymore because they've changed. They've grown up. I knew them this tall. And now, you know, they're adults. And they remember you. And it makes, you made an impact on their lives. And I thank you for starting this church because I've had the blessing of being able to make an impact on people for the Lord. And it's just been a blessing. So thank you, Pastor. And thank you all. Thank you all for being here, making this possible. You know, I said it a few weeks ago, there's a young man here in, in the aisle here. He was like, he's like the fellowship baby. He was about the size of, her, of his mama's arm when he walked in the door. And he's sitting here in the front row this morning. I love to embarrass him again. It's fantastic. But it's just amazing. It's just amazing how 21 years, and I, my wife and I were talking about it. It's like 21 years seems like not long enough but also seems like a long time at the same time. It's, it's a bizarre, time is an odd thing, isn't it? But we're blessed. And if today's your first time here, appreciate your, your patience with my nostalgia. Uh, but again, we're glad, glad you're here. So very glad, grateful that you're here. And if you don't mind filling out that guest registry that's right there in your worship guide that you got when you walked in the door, we really would appreciate it. We promise not to bother you. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here this morning and a postcard whenever a big event is going on here at the church, uh, only a couple times a year. And if you'd like to, instead of filling out that guest registry, go out to the Welcome Center after the service, and uh, they'll give you a little gift bag out there if you fill out the same basic info over there. We'd love for you to do so, please. And if you're watching online, good morning. We love you, appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, send us a Facebook message or an email, and we will do the same thing for you. And don't forget, right after the service, you're welcome to hang out for both. We'll feed you during halftime. I call it halftime. We have donuts and all that good stuff. We'll talk about that in a second. But please, we'd love for you to come back. If you don't, if you need to go home, go home, but come back and have lunch with us this afternoon, all for free, right here on the grounds, Publix fried chicken, potato salad, Larry's bacon with green beans on the side. It's going to be a great, great afternoon. And also, thank you so much for bringing the boxes, everyone who, who grabbed a box. Uh, thank you so much for bringing them back. If you just are sitting here going, oh, no, I forgot my box, go home, bring your box back, and then have lunch with us. That's even a better plan. So, But we'd love you, appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing this and making a difference. Tonight, middle school and high school kids are meeting at the Heat home. If you'd like to invite somebody, if you don't know anything about it, over there at the Welcome Center, right there in the middle, again, that same table, there's some cards there for you that give you directions. If you want to talk to them, they're back here in room three or four, loving and teaching these kids. Uh, and they just have a great, great ministry going on right in their home. We love and appreciate them. We trust them. And uh, you can do the same with your kids as well. And if you would like to plug into a Bible study, we have one nearly every day of the week. Love for you to do it. Check one out. Um, they're all awesome. Right there on your worship guide. Give us a call at the office if you have any questions. Friend of friend, every Tuesday here at Fellowship Church. And this is a great time, especially if you're you know, struggling a little bit with the holidays. You want to make some new friends here at the church. This is a great chance to do that every single Tuesday right here at the church. Please come on out for a great time of fun, games, and make some new friends. 
And if you don't mind, give us a hand with some cleaning on Wednesday. we got lots of people going away, going on vacation. If you can be here at 8 a.m., we're out of here by 9. Believe it or not, we get this whole entire building spick and span. It's such a short period of time. Uh, if you don't mind helping us out, come on out on Wednesday for just a little while. And Senior Fellowship is coming up this Wednesday. Not Thursday, but Wednesday. We have something special going on here Thursday, trying to do some mapping of the room for sound to try to make sure we can do the best job we can do with sound. So they need silence. So we had to bump seniors back one day. But it's going to be an incredible meal put together by Larry and some other volunteers. They're going to be working really, really hard to do uh, oven roasted turkey for you. We're going to be doing stuffing, mashed potatoes. We ask you to please bring a side that day, your favorite Thanksgiving Day side, uh, if it's stuffing. If it's anything like that, do it anyway. Even if we have some, you can never have enough stuffing, right? And if yours is like you think the best, we'll do a contest or something. But please sign up on your way out. We'd love to have you this, this Wednesday here at the church. And also Wednesday that evening, starting at 4 o'clock, is Grief Share. Anyone struggling with grief, you've lost a loved one, that profound loss, we want to fill it with love. We want to fill that, that spot that's missing with other people that, that can come alongside you and lift you up. So every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, come for that. And then stay, because at 6 o'clock, uh, see, uh, our Celebrate Recovery Fellowship Recovery begins right here at the church uh, with a free meal out there in the foyer made by people that love you, want to come alongside you. And then at, at 6.30, they come in here for incredible music, testimony time, time in God's word. They want to lift you up and help you get over your hurts, your hangups, any struggles you might have by getting as close to Christ as possible so that you can overcome any of those struggles. That's every Wednesday right here at the church. And then on the 15th, I believe, Wednesday evening, it's going to be um, Divorce Cares, Getting Through the Holidays class. It's going to be about an hour or so long, um, but you don't have to be divorced. If you're someone who's struggling with this, if you missed, missed the grief share version of this, this will still work for you. This will still help you get through these holidays, and you'll find some encouragement. So come on out at 630 for this as well. And gentlemen, come on down, please. We have a bunch of guys right here at Fellowship Church. This is a ministry that's been rolling um, in our area for a while. But we had a group of men that decided to take 10 weeks of their lives and dedicate it to Christ, dedicate it to their families, to grow in the Lord, uh, led by, by our brothers and the Lord right here. And I'm going to go ahead. Oh, they're coming up. Yeah. Pat. All right, come on up. Yep, this is our Fight Club, guys. And this is Mr. Kyle. I love this guy. I appreciate this guy. He's a good man. And uh, he's got a couple of words for you. I love you too. <laughs> All right, guys. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Uh, these men joined a, a men's ministry called Fight Club over 10 weeks ago. And... Uh, Man, it was, it was, what would you guys say? It was a little bit of a, it was a challenge. They were challenged physically. They were challenged relationally, emotionally, and I always mess this up, Larry, and spiritually. <laughs> and uh, man, I'm just so proud to see these guys uh, come through it and just get through it and just uh, hold each other accountable and uh, get through it. Um, a couple of God sightings for this chapter is uh, 81 men joined the Fight Club from 17 different churches. 22 of them were from Fellowship Church. So let's, let's raise that up. Out of the 17 churches, we had the biggest representation of all the churches in our area. And it's just something different when the fellowship guys show up to, to a mid-meeting or a, a meeting or a, a, a squad challenge, man. Man, we, uh, the men's prayer breakfast, we talked about, we got a bunch of snowbirds coming back down. They don't, they don't get what they get up north. Like, we, we love on people. We hug people. We're, you know, we're, 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 we're loving on our community and our children and our family. But I, I just want to say how proud I am, you guys. You, you're now stronger, uh, stronger men of Christ. You're, you're stronger men in your families, and you're stronger men in your community. I just want to say, give it up for these guys for this challenge. Oh, how was it? Well done, guys. So this is, so here's the deal. Fight Club's over. You guys have been challenged with weekly challenges, and we don't have to do that stuff anymore. You get to do those things now, right? So what we want to do is encourage you guys. Um, I, we've talked to a few of you. You're going to join the Fishers of Men. Uh, we're going to link you guys up with Disciple Makers and start a, another, another journey on that. Um, and for the rest of us, we want you to join a Bible study. Um, 
There's a bunch of co-ed here. Do a Bible study with your wife. Ronnie's got Bible study on Monday night. Join that. Just stay engaged. And then the last thing I got is on February 9th is the next Fight Club kickoff. And all the men in here we want to invite. And if you want for more information, you can get with me or Larry. Amen. Thanks. So Hey, real quick. Hold on one second. I just want to say 22 guys started with us. We didn't all finish till the 10 weeks, but the guys that are out there that didn't and the guys that are up here, this is who represented your church. And I got to say, they represent this church really well with honor. They worked hard. They're respectful. And you should be real proud of them. Come on. Come on. I love you, buddy. Proud of y'all. Hey, man, y'all be good. Go, get out of here. Get out of here. Ain't got all day for y'all. Come on, love you back, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Wrap it up. All right. Come on. All right, and this is our town. Thank you so much. And that's like part of our town. Look at these guys. This is an awesome thing. It really, really is. Thank you, gentlemen. But this is our town. We thank you for wearing the shirts and the hats and all that good stuff out in our community. If you don't mind um, continuing to do that, we really, really appreciate it. It's the number one thing that we see on those worship guide slips that they come in. We see a, a, a sign or a T-shirt or someone said hi to me. It just means the world to us. So if you don't mind, grab a shirt, grab a hat. Uh, we'd love for you to wear them out in the community while you're doing your thing. You can put a bumper sticker on your car. It just points people here to Fellowship Church so they can learn about Jesus. You can be a part of someone's testimony without even doing a thing, just putting on a shirt. So do us a favor, help us out. They're five bucks. If you don't have the cash, we'd gladly give you one. Thank you so very, very much. And we thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. We're able to do this cookout today for free. Uh, like I said, give away a shirt. Do whatever we got to do here because of your generous giving. We thank you so much for that. If you haven't checked out give2fc.com, super easy way to give online. Um, it, you can give one-time gift, weekly, monthly, however you'd like to set that up. So please check that out as well. And then we have, of course, as I spoke about earlier, we have hospitality all for free over there, right over here to your left as you're exiting. Make a new fellowship friend today. We'd love for you to hang out a bit, uh, get some hospitality, go home if you want to, but come on back for our cookout after the 1030. We love and appreciate you and hope you have a great day. Very good, very good. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have a special? Uh, you don't. We're all going to sing with you. What is it? Oh, I love that. Is that we got one or two? Is this it? You got two songs? Good, good. Amen. Well, that was good, wasn't it? Those guys, those Fight Club guys, that's pretty good stuff. Well, here's a couple other songs. We're going to have you get on your feet again. Let's do a couple more songs. Amen. Come on. Let's do it. You can do it. These are very heartfelt songs. They'll touch your heart this morning. Let's sing this one. There is a Redeemer. Amen. We honor Him today. Everything we do, we honor Christ. And a little bit, we'll have a, an offering this morning. We appreciate your giving today. But that'll come up in a bit. But let's, let's just praise the Lord a little bit longer. Let Him touch your heart today. Amen. There is a Redeemer. Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father, for giving us your Son.
Come on, church. Oh, thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. Oh, thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son. Praise the Lord. Church, come on, one more time. And here's the interesting thing. These were all songs I did not know 21 years ago. Didn't know these songs. They were newer songs. Many of them sort of brand new. And uh, so it brought a whole other world of music into my life. Amen. And if you're here for the first time today, we normally have a full band. And it's usually quite a lot more energy. You know what I'm saying? It can be crazy a little bit. No, it's not. What's that? Is that We're a, trying. Do what now? We're trying to bring the energy. No, 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 no. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> this is beautiful. I'm just saying we'll do. We do all kinds of music here, don't we? Amen. So this is refreshing today. I'm dying now, this, to jump around. You are. Come on, girl. <laughs> you can do it. Now this. Now we're going back to page 49 in the hymnal. Got it? I don't believe it. Here we go. You just believe me. Hush your mouth. Come on, here we go. As I get older, I, I do just throw numbers out now. Here we go. Come on, here we go. <laughs> Let's sing this great song. Give praise to the Lord for every good thing in your life. Amen. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shame. i 
chance yeah amen that's about the all the jumping around you got was that last note right there thank you for giving to the lord's work at fellowship church i sound like a broke record now i'm always thinking y'all that's the side i want to be on i'm grateful for you that's crazy i mean when we started church to not have two nickels to rub together first thing i did when i met with the folks first thing at one night on a wednesday night i met with them I said, I got you something. Some envelopes. Right. An envelope right there. I'd gone to the post office. I would scour it over those box numbers. They tried to give me a goofy number. No, 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 no. I want to look at all the available numbers you got. And I found one I liked. Box one, two, one. And I was thinking one to one. One to one. So I gave them that, those envelopes that night. And within a week, those envelopes started coming back in. And within one week, we had $5,000. Let's thank the Lord. We have $5,000. What? I had another church standing in the wings to help us to make sure that I could be paid. I said, I don't know. I don't have a clue. We'd starve to death here. And uh, so this other church was ready to help pay my salary. Whole nother church. And you know what? We never needed one dime from another church. Can we thank the Lord we never had to call on them? Ha! That's the truth, man. So thank you for giving today. We still have some envelopes, by the way, out back. Yeah. But the Lord changed me over the years. I didn't always say, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it. I've been growing the whole time, too. But the Lord, I know how... I just don't like it. I don't like churches taking. I don't like churches making up stuff about money, guys. I can't stand it. It makes me sick to my stomach, okay? And I do this for a living. Are you kidding me? Okay? So I want to make sure when we give here, we give cheerfully. And if we can't give cheerfully, then we what? Just keep it. We'll, be, we'll make it. We'll make it. Can you say that? We'll what? And we have made it. Amen? Come on. We need the Lord. So thank you for giving today. We appreciate it. Trevor, come on up and pray for us. Appreciate you, buddy. Coach Southwell, congratulations to Lemon Bay High School on winning the playoff game on Friday night. <laughs> Big challenge is coming Friday night. We are at home. We're at home, which is very unusual in a, in a tournament, man. We're at home again. That's a blessing. That's because of the boys' hard work all year. They earn that. This coming Friday night, it's the biggest game of the year, there's no doubt about it, against Booker. Okay, now we beat them for the district. Okay, and they have a chance to come back in here and fight us again. Okay, so it's going to be a big fight Friday night. Big fight Friday night. <laughs> 7.30, right? Okay, we'd appreciate you want to come out to a ball game, wear that fellowship shirt, and let this town know, hey, we're, we stand with this football team. Amen? So come on out. But we're proud of you, man. We appreciate it. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work, buddy boy. Thank you, buddy. And here's a ref right here. But you're not refing Friday night's game. Come on. No, that's right. Otherwise, it'd be illegal. The fix would be in there. <laughs> so I, I, just want to give, I just want to give 30 seconds of testimony. Two years ago, I came to this church for the first time with my family, my three children, and my wife. And this church welcomed me and became my church family because your family and your home is where your heart is. 
and my heart is here, and I know, is this your home? Is this where your heart is? Amen. So it's easy for me to give and, and uh, of my time, talents, and treasures, and I, I just thank you, because Pastor Gary, he didn't qualify me. He didn't go, oh, yeah, is this guy able to serve here? He just said, if you want to serve here, start serving, and I just jumped in, and it was fun, right? Isn't that the truth? It, so I just want to invite you to serve and, and come. Whatever you feel like you can do, just serve the Lord here. You're welcome to do that. Let, let's pray together, Father. We love you, Father. You're so good to us, Lord. Thank you for the things that you provide for us, Lord, our homes, our cars, our, wow. our families, Everything. Lord. You just bless us so much, Father. Help us to just give that little portion back to you and honor you with our time, talents, and treasures. I thank you for this lighthouse and this community, what it represents, so that we can reach more people for Christ, Amen. Lord, and we can be built up in Christ. We thank you that this is a real church, Lord. We're not perfect church, no. but we're real, Lord. We're down to earth, and we love you, God. So just help us. I pray you bless every giver, God. Bless this offering, God, so that we can build a bigger place so that more people can come to know Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, guys. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Trevor. God bless you, man. Appreciate it. Love you back, buddy. Hey. If you're watching online, thank you for giving to the Lord's work. We appreciate you. Hey, 21 years ago, there wasn't even anything called online. It's a whole new thing we got going. Isn't that crazy? Appreciate you being able to tune in with us. Would you write us a note right now? Tell us where you're watching from. Maybe a note of encouragement. We'd appreciate it. I'd love to hear from you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing that chorus, Miss Karen. I don't know if I can do it as high. I'll try my best. And I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I am free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Let's thank the Lord for Miss Karen. Everybody serving us for all these years. And I tell you one thing, that woman right there, that woman right there, her and her husband have been by my side for over 21 years cooking, doing. When we started that church, they were right there with me, worshiping in their home. We would practice our songs on Thursday night. And by the way, they still had the team over pretty regularly for food where Larry cooks it for the team on a Thursday night. I mean, this is, that's an unusual situation we got going right there, baby. I'm telling you. Good stuff. Appreciate you, sweetie. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh oh. I always said that it took God 25 years to train me, and I didn't know it, but He was training me to play for Gary Clark and training me to play 
for Fellowship Church. Look at that. You. Amen. Isn't that great? Yeah, because I'm not the easiest guy to play for. That's true. I hold things out. I do whatever. I stop in the middle. You know, I'm crazy. And anyway, let's go to the, let's go to the message this morning. You think, you, think, you think listening to me preach is hard. You ought to be that lady. That's rough, what she's been through. Let's go to the Word this morning. Roger announced this message. He said... Uh, he said, Pastor Clark's going to put on his coach's hat in today's message. We're talking about the last days. How do you live in the last days? How do you live when you see all the mess going on around you? And it's not just in the Middle East, guys, but don't, don't think that's not a huge deal over in the Middle East. A third carrier group, I believe, has just been sent to the Middle East. This is not something that we've seen happen. Maybe... In, in many of your life, it's crazy. And so we're set to go to war. Don't know that's going to happen. I don't know. We've been set to go to war for a while. We're getting there. We're funding Ukraine, giving them weapons. Okay? And they're using those weapons to fire at Russians. And somehow we think we're on the sidelines doing nothing. We're not on the sidelines doing nothing. And without our help with Israel right now, Israel would most likely be annihilated. How many think that's probably true? If we didn't help them, they'd be annihilated. That's the truth, guys. That puts us in a, in a, in a, in a pretty precarious situation. And you that know Bible prophecy and have been studying it for maybe like I have for years, so much of this is just, wow, it's just what we've been thinking would happen. Okay, and we've talked about, well, what can we do? We're in Englewood. What can I do? I'm one person. Well, I'm to live for Christ. What does it look like to live for the Lord in the last days? And so I want to use this day, this 21st anniversary, just as a message to encourage us to live for the Lord and be better and stronger. Amen? Y'all with me or not? Okay, let's go for it. Let's go, Raj. A little bit late. The last days. Okay. The last days. What about me was last week's message. What about me, man? All this mess going on. What am I supposed to do? What about me? And we talked about it. The Bible says, say this verse with me out loud. Know ye not that they which run in a race run how much? How much? But one, help me, receives the prize. Help me now. So run. Why? So you may what? Obtain. Okay? So that's the message today. We're going to talk about that. Are these the last days? Guys, I think they are, but what do I know? Here's what I'm going to do. I don't know about you. Are these the last days? I don't know, but I'm going to run like they are. You hear me or not? Say Time for playing's over. Time for living for Christ is now. Live for the Lord. Best time in your life to get right with God is right now. Things that you've been dogging you your whole life, struggling with. This is a great opportunity right now for you to lay that mess down. Agree with God this crap in your life isn't right. And say, so I'm going to live for you. I don't know if these are the last days, but I know they're my last days. And I want to follow you with my whole heart. I want to run. This race that I want to run to win. Okay, buddy? Push me, buddy. So that's the title of my message today. Run to what? I need you, I need you talking to me. Come on. I can't take this. Come on. It, was it Bethany? Brittany? Was it Brittany? Last name again? Turner. I was going to say Taylor. I was close. Brittany travels the world, it sounds like. Is that correct? How'd you find us, Brittany, being from here? And a friend brought her in last Sunday. Amen. And Brittany told me how much you have made a difference in her life in that little bit of time. You felt loved, correct? Amen. This is a time for us to live for Christ. Even though you have your job where you travel all over the world, I mean, you're Australia, whatever you're going to be doing, but uh, wherever you are, you need to run. You run that race with patience for Christ. Amen? 
But we need to keep doing what we, what we do here because people like of her, they will come in on a Sunday morning. Amen, yes or no? We need to make sure we're steady and doing the right thing. Run to win. Run to win is the message. As believers in Jesus Christ, we are, what's that ugly word? We don't like that word. That's a cuss word in today's world. We are accountable. We're accountable for our love for Jesus and our love for people. That's what we built this ministry on. I didn't realize it when we started the church years ago. I was on Inglewood Beach, for crying out loud. Early in the morning, about 5 a.m. And one of the things I was thinking about was this church, the church's name. The church is, what are we going to call it? What are we going to call it? Well, we named it Fellowship Church because it's hard to say Fellowship Church with an angry tone. I go to Fellowship. Fellowship is a nice word. You can't hardly say it without smiling. Fellowship. You see what I'm saying? And it means, it means things in common. But what would our mission statement be? If you're starting something, if it's a business or whatever, you ought to know what you're doing. You ought to have a plan. And so the mission statement the Lord gave me that morning on the beach was nothing I'd ever really thought of. It was, right out of the Bible, to love Jesus and to love people. And as I've lived over these years, my goodness, that's everything. That's everything. So we're going to give an account to the Lord for how we loved him and we loved them. Amen? We're talking about running to win. You might say, where is that in the Bible about that loving Jesus stuff? Y'all just crazy people. Well, I'm glad you asked me. And thou shalt love the who? Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. That's a lot. This is the first commandment. What's the most important thing? That right there. Any questions, say. That's the most important thing. Well, what's the second, Clark, since you're so smart? I'm glad you asked me that question. And the second is like the first one. Namely this, you shall love your who? As who? Yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. I'm going to be honest with you. If anything becomes greater than that at this church, I don't want to be here. If it becomes the money or, or running down the aisle or me popping you in the head, I want that right there to dictate my life. To love Jesus and to love people. Got it? Yes or no? And you're going to give an account. You can say whatever. When it comes down to it, right there. And by the way, all the commandments, he gives us ten. Now, there's more commandments. They are the big ten, no. The first four have to do with loving him. The last six, from five to ten, has to do with loving them. So even the Ten Commandments are all wrapped up into this. You hear me or not say? It's huge that we understand that. Run to win. We will be rewarded for the what? That we've what? That's what's going to happen. For none of us lives to himself. I'm preaching now, hang on. And no man dies to himself. You weren't put on this planet to live for you. I live for me, it's all about me. Anybody that thinks it's all about themselves, you're not liked by a lot of people. And if people around you that act like they like you, they're just acting like they like you. We just don't like somebody that's full of bull and full of themselves. No man lives to himself, dies to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. So whether we live, is this the last days? Or whether we die, I don't know. We are the Lord's. This is how we're to live. For to this end, Christ both died. He rose and he resurrected. That he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Why are you doing that? Why do you set it not your brother? But we shall all stand one day before the judgment seat of Christ. It's written as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me. Every tongue shall confess to God. So every one of us, here's that ugly word again, is going to give a what? An account of himself or herself to the Lord. We're talking about running to win. We're talking about the main thing is to love Jesus and to love people. That's the main thing. 1 Corinthians 3. We are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given to me unto a wise master builder, 
Paul says, I've laid the foundation. Another one's going to come and build thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is who? Why do I preach Jesus here? Clark, you're all over Jesus. You're always talking about Jesus. Why wouldn't I talk about the very thing that is our foundation? Yes or no, amen. Say, yeah, but what about this? You're a little too heavy on Jesus. No, you too light in the loafers, okay? It's what we need. We need him, baby. Yes or no? I'm going to stand before him, not you, and not some whatever, ecclesiastical hierarchy somewhere. I'm standing before the Lord. He is my foundation, okay? That's how you run, babe. Okay, according to the grace of God, which has given to us, he's a wise master builder, okay? I've laid the foundation, he says. No other foundation, verse 11, can, be, can, 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 can man lay than slave, which is Jesus Christ. If any man builds upon this foundation, Jesus, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work one day will be made what? For the day, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. The day of judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. The fire shall try every one of our works, what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he's built thereon, he's going to receive a what? What's the title of today's message? Run to what? I want to win. I want to win that reward from Christ. If any man's work, those shall be burned. He shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be what? Saved. Yet so as by fire. Guys, we don't run to earn our way to heaven. We, we run this race because he's our Lord and our Savior. And he's given us this command to love him and to love them. And that's the call of the Christian. We're to run. In the last days, I encourage you to live your life like you've never lived it before. To confess. To know him like you've never known him before. To know it won't be long. You're going to see, you're going to see him again. It's going to happen one day. Amen? So run to win. As a Christian, the Bible calls us what? Stewards, stewards, stewards. That word means manager. You are the manager of your life. Would you say this with me? I am the manager of me. Say that out loud. I am the manager of, one more time. I am the manager of me. Nobody makes the decisions for you. Nobody can live for the Lord but you, for you. I'm the manager of me. If you're going to run this race, you've got to realize this responsibility is on you to run this race for Christ. Run to win. Run to win. You might say, well, it's hard. You don't understand, Clark. Listen, I don't get a pass for how hard it was. How many had some really hard stuff? I'm talking really hard stuff in your life. Can I see some hands? I mean, some really hard stuff. You don't get a pass. I don't get a pass. Y'all don't get a pass for how hard it was. Okay. When you're called to, uh, on a team and, and it gets tough, suck it up! Okay, run to win. If it's hard, I'm sorry it's hard. I've had hard. You might, you're a preacher, you ain't have hard. I've had so hard, you don't even know what hard is, some of you. You hear me? Sit up there judging me. Okay, it's just whiners. It doesn't matter how hard it is in my life, how hard it is in your life. We are called to run this race. Y'all hear me or not say? I mean, I hurt a lot now. Y'all know that? Crawling up these stairs ain't like it used to be. I used to jump up here. But it would help if I dropped 30 pounds. But hey, things get harder. So what? The Bible says you don't get a pass. Wherefore, you and I are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. One of them's my mama looking down. I start whining, I can hear her go, I'm going to knock you out first time I see you. <laughs> you know who's in that cloud of witnesses? People who started this church with me. Bill Patterson, Pansy Patterson. Millard Walker, Millie Walker. Fran Lloyd, Betty Lloyd. These are people that I loved. We lost one recently. Lost her hubby uh, two years ago, George Beamish, Dory Beamish. You think they're going to give me a pass? Oh, I feel sorry for them down there. They ain't doing none of that. 
We're compassed with a great cloud of witnesses, guys. You and I need to lay aside every weight. If you're going to run this race in the last days, you better be dropping some weight. I'm talking to myself. Now, it's, it's, pr it's pretty much talking about things that keep you from serving the Lord. And the sin that does beset us, let us run the race with what? Patience. That race is set before us. How do I do it, Gary? How do I run this race? Say verse 12. Looking unto. There you go again, making a lot out of Jesus. Yeah, he's all in the Bible. Looking unto Jesus, say it with me, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he what? Endured to what? And he despised the what? But now he's what? Set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's thank the Lord for Jesus. Come on, man. Come on. Run to win. I've got some things I want you to look at real quick. Did I run the race and finish the course? Remember last week we had a little test? Remember that last week? Y'all remember or not? Y'all sleeping on me? Here we go. Know ye not that they which run in a race, they run all. But how many gets the prize? One. One. I could talk all day about this new world we live in where everybody's a winner. Chicken dinner. No, there's a lot of losers, okay? There's very few that win. I want us to be in Inglewood, Florida, Port Charlotte, Venice, this area. I want us to be a winning church. I want us to win people to Christ. I want us to do the right thing. I want us to have a good testimony. We're not perfect people. I want us to love the snot out of people. I want us to try really hard when we come here on Sunday morning to make a difference in somebody's life. You hear me? If I can do it, you can do it, all right? I'm not above you. I'm not better than you. We can do this, okay? It's who we called to be. We need to, we need to win this thing, okay? Especially these days we're living in. Are you kidding me? Don't, do you think people need hope today, yes or no? Say. It's pretty depressing, yes or no? How many thought it couldn't get more depressing after a couple, I mean, like three months ago? Now it's even worse, yes or no? Say amen. I'm talking about news and mess like that in our world. It's crazy, ain't it? How many thought groceries? Come on, them gro that cereal can't go up no more than that. You know what I'm saying? That's craziness. Anyway, but we're blessed. Paul said, I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Say that verse with me. I have what? Fought a good fight. I've what? I finished my course. And I've done what? I've kept the faith. And guess what? There's, a, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, is going to give me, Paul says that day, and not to me only, say it with me, but unto all those that love his what? It's talking about last days. Are you running your life, the race of your life? Do you want to win for Christ? I'll be rewarded or I ain't. You're going to win or you're not. And the losers really are going to be the people that we let down. So what can I do? I will be rewarded. I want you to do a checklist. Now, Roger ain't got all day for all the verses. I'm going to try to hit them, buddy, but you got to be on your game. You hit you me or not, say. Here we go. What will I be rewarded for, Pastor? How do I run my race of my life? What does the Bible say that's really important for me in the last days? Number one, say it out loud. How I do what? How I spend my time. I'm to redeem the time because the days are evil. You're going to be rewarded on how you spent your time. People matter. He matters. People matter. Yeah, but I ain't got time. You're going to be judged for that. People matter enough for you to take time on them. You hear me, yes or no? How do you redeem your time? You're going to give an account for that one day. Number two. Say it with me, how I use my what? My gifts, my talents. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God that's in you by the putting on of my hands. You have gifts, you have talents. You might say, well, I don't like you. You're different, Gary. You talk, you're funny, you're, you look weird. Guess what? I'm using everything I got for Jesus. You hear me, yes or no? I'm putting it all out. Everywhere I go, I'm the same. You, don't, you think I'm just like this? He, I bet he ain't like this when he goes into Farlow's. How many ever seen me at Farlow's? Am I like this, yes or no? I want to use everything I have for the Lord, and sometimes I don't, and I'm going to be judged for that. Do you all hear me or not? 
You matter, you have value. God didn't put you on this planet to just be a nothing. You're somebody and you can do something. You're going to be judged for that or going to be rewarded for it. Here's another one. Say number three, how I what? In the last days, I need to run to win. How do I run to win? Redeem the time. How do I run to win? Use these gifts that God's given you. How do I run to win? Learn to control yourself. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beats the air. Say it with me. But I keep under my body, I bring it under subjection. Lest by any means when I preach to other folks, I myself would be a what? A castaway. I've got to learn to control myself. Well, that's just the way I am. Yeah, because you're just an out of control crazy person. Yeah, I've always, I've always put people down. Yeah, and, you, and people can't stand you for it. Okay, I've always been a, you know, just an abuser. I've mooched on people. Yeah, and you know what? It's pathetic. You hear me or not? Learn to control yourself. Ask the Lord to help you. Lord, help me. Come into my life. Help me get in your word. Agree with him on some things in your life that are out of control. Am I too ugly for you? We're going to win, baby. Got it? Number four. I'm going to be rewarded for what? Say it with me. How I what? How I use my money. But I say unto you, he that sows sparingly is going to reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully is going to reap bountifully. Every man according as he what? Purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, that's mad, or of necessity, that's sad. But God loves a what? So we're to give glad. How we use our money, I'm going to be rewarded for that one day. You hear me? That's part of running this race. Number five, I'm going to be rewarded for how I use my what? Authority. Now, that you, there's all kinds of levels of authority. Nothing greater than the parental authority that you have as a, as a mom or dad. Even if you're a grandparent, you still have authority. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. There's pastoral authority that I have, whose faith follow, continue, uh, considering the end of their conversation. I will be judged by God Almighty or not rewarded on how I treated you, how I taught you. You hear me? Or if I use my position here to make myself wealthy by preaching some gospel that's a false gospel. For example, if you think that Jesus died on the cross so you could be rich monetarily, you, you believe a false gospel. He died on the cross so you could be rich eternally. He, 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 how much does hell cost? It costs the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not to enrich myself. Did y'all hear that pretty clear or not say? How I use my authority, how I teach God's word. But you also are going to give an account for your authority, how you use your authority. Another one, say it with me. I'm going to be rewarded for how I what? How I witness, how I share what? Well, I can't talk to people about Jesus. What will they say? They might say this, thank you. They might say, wow, that gave me something to think about. They might say, yes, yes, I need the Lord in my life. Are we witnessing for Christ? Y'all hear me or not? When we started this church, I went to the local paper downtown. And they knew me a little bit. And the lady said to me, oh, great, that's just what we need, another church. Can you believe she said that to me? discourage me like that but you know what I agree with her we don't need another country club church they used to call us the country club church do you know that or not that's when I was at the high school I'm a country club church and we don't even have a building <laughs> we were a country club they said because of how we gave the donuts and how we treated people with, you know, how you roll out the red carpet for people. I call that good southern hospitality. Amen. We don't need a country club. We need the church of the living God. Y'all hear me or not? Yeah, praise the Lord, man. Good stuff. Especially in the last days. Amen. Say, come on. 
What is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not you even in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his what? Coming again. I need to be living for Christ. They that are going to be wise are going to shine as the brightness of the firmament. They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Roger, I can't read them all. How I suffer for God, I'm going to be rewarded. What? Yeah, you're going to be rewarded for your suffering, but not if you made a living out of complaining about it, whining about it, trying to get money for it. <sighs> Blessed are you when men revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted you the prophets of which were before you. You don't know the number of times I've wanted to literally go to somebody's house and beat the crap out of them. Yeah, anybody else want to do that before other than just me? I'm going to be rewarded. I'm going to be, re what was that point again? Yeah, I know, yeah. That's all they're going to remember from this message. No, sometimes we suffer, but we got to take it. Yes or no? If you want to run the race and win, keep looking. How I respond to temptation and trials. I'm going to be rewarded for this. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. This is last day's scripture for the book of Revelation. Behold, the devil's going to cast some of you into prison. Are Christians on our planet being thrown into prison right now, yes or no? Absolutely. Are they being killed in this world today for their faith? Absolutely. Some of you are going to be tried you're going to have tribulation 10 days. Say that last part with me. Be what? Faithful unto what? And I'll give you a what? Run the race. Run the race. Okay, I'm going to be rewarded for this. How I'm faithful to God's word. This is a verse to me, but you as well. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Don't take, take taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre or money but of a ready mind. That's how I'm supposed to teach God's word here. Not as a Lord over God's heritage. I'm better than you. Kiss my ring. That's bull. It's not in the Bible. Matter of fact, it's condemned in the Bible. I'm to be an example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd Jesus shall appear, that's his coming, you shall receive a crown of glory that doesn't fade away. You hear me? If you took the second coming of Christ last days out of the Bible, you'd have to get rid of most of your New Testament because so many of the principles we live by are tied to his second coming. Are we living in the last days? Not sure, but this is how I'm supposed to be living. Did I run the race and finish the course? Let's, know you not they which run in a race, run all. Well, I ran in the race. I made it halfway. That's not the plan. What if I get sick? Some of the greatest examples for Christ have been people that I've seen that have sickness. <laughs> and their light shines. I've been with many who've had pancreatic cancer. I think of Jason. I was at a store yesterday. I was at a store Friday, Friday. Someone called me. They needed me to go to sign something. So I went to this notary for my friend. My friend, Bob, are you in the room? He's here. Bob, remember the other day that, that fella talked about a man named Jason? Your husband. And his suffering touched people. That might be hard for you to hear today, but that's a gift from God back to you today. And he told me when I was in that store, we weren't talking about what I came there to do. That was easy. We talked about him. How we suffer. How we struggle. We got to run the race all the way to the end. The last thing I'll remember about, Sue, about your hubby was when I came to visit. And he was on his deathbed. And he pulled me down close to his ear. Could hardly speak. And he said, you matter so much, Pastor Gary. We love you so much. You're loved, Gary. 
would you just run the race and run all the way to the end no matter what and stay faithful and even when you're already in heaven people will be talking about you pretty good stuff almost done how'd you do on your checklist Will I be rewarded? Here it is. How did I spend my time? Did I spend it appropriately? Did I use my gifts wisely? Did I keep myself under control? Did I use my money honorably? Did I use authority appropriately? Did I share the good news of Christ? Did I suffer for the Lord? Did I rightly handle the trials and temptations in my life? Was I faithful to God's word? How'd you do? Let's thank the Lord for his word. We're done. I'm late. Wow. Let's jump on up. Yeah, man, I appreciate you. I preach so long. I'm horrible. Come on. We don't, we're just going to do it either way. Amen? Why don't we end this morning with heads bowed like we do? Come on. Just heads bowed. Not long. But long enough for somebody to get saved. You just think about it. You're here today, and if you died, you don't know you'd go to heaven. We haven't piled on you here. We haven't tried to tell you something that ain't true. And had to try, we ain't tried to rob you. <sighs> really, all I want to do is love you. I would love to love you to Christ. And you have your chance right now. You have a chance right now. You came here today. You're here. You're in the room or you're online, but you're here. You've heard God's word. Would you take that last step? You're so close. Would you say yes to Jesus today? Would you say, Jesus, I believe in you and no one else? Would you put your faith and trust in him today and not in a preacher or yourself or a church? Can I lead you to that prayer and lead you to the Lord right now? Can I do that with you right now? Can I do that with you right now? And know all over this big room, people are praying for you. They're not judging you. They're running their race. They're running their race. They're doing their part. You're surrounded today by brothers and sisters in Christ who want to love you. Would you bow your head with me and just keep it there and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I'm the sinner. You're, you're not. You're the Holy One. Forgive me, Lord. And Jesus, I want you to know, best I know how, I believe in you. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you did all that because you love me. You love me. And I receive you into my life today. I put my faith in you and no one else. Save me this day. Help me, I pray, in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would raise a hand and say, Pastor Gary, I said that today, Pastor. I meant that, Pastor. I did that, Pastor. That was me, Pastor. I did that today. Lord, thank you for these. Help us as we go our way. Help the next crowd coming in. And Lord, help us not forget what we've learned, please, especially me. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, guys. Don't forget the chicken dinner. Come on, praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Yeah, thank the Lord. Don't forget the chicken dinner.